in the previous video we have discussed some project selection tips for beginners right but now in this video i'm going to discuss how to choose a project and some tips for final year students and you can say as well as for pre final year students right because as we know now you are you are in final year and you are now going to sit into the placements and your projects are going to play very important role in your placements because you are a fresher and you don't have any experience so what you have to showcase in your resume is your internships any certification and mainly the projects right so your projects you know should be something very new or you can say something very innovative and great something which is and you know it's an eye catcher for the interviewer right so now i assume that at this point of time if you are in final year then at least you have worked on four to five projects at least right and if you haven't done this thing then this is your biggest mistake right now i assume that if you haven't done if you haven't worked on any project till final year and it's your first project and still if you are in pre final year and if it is your first project then definitely you know uh, you have gained only the theoretical knowledge you have learned the programming languages only to pass out the subjects you haven't gained any exposure any practical exposure and that thing is very important because see now you are in college so i think marks doesn't matter so much your knowledge and skills matter right marks i don't i am not saying that uh, you obviously you have to gain that cut off marks 65% 70% marks to sit in the placements but it's not like that 94% marks or 95% marks right i hope you are getting my point so you have to you know focus on your skills your knowledge your practical exposure and all these kind of things right so now how to choose the project if you are in final year so i assume that now obviously you are in final year you have worked on four to five projects and now you know your area of interest right in which area you want to go so first point is now it's time to deep dive into your area of interest so now here you need you are not supposed to select any simple project you have to do some research some surveys and you have to deep dive into your area of interest right your project should be something very innovative very big and something new right so maybe uh, some common areas or what you can say android development app development ios app or uh, game development or website these kind of things right but if you want if you are not going to uh, you know choose a project from this area and you want something different so the trending areas or what you can select cloud computing artificial intelligence blockchain that is very trending nowadays right and um, cryptography is also good and you can say um, augmented reality is also good so you can select any area from this thing right so these are some areas and as well as in machine learning is also in trending nowadays so you can select any area now now you have selected the area suppose you have no experience about this area but you want to work you want to do any project in this area right so now your very important point is what generally student ignore these kind of this point especially you have to choose your guide carefully and your team member also now you know your classmates better and you know who can help you in this kind of project who is good in this area plus your mentor or your guide so now you are in final year or maybe in free pre final year so now you have the idea that which faculty you know is expertise in which area right maybe someone who is teaching cloud computing for cloud computing you can contact to that faculty right or maybe someone some faculty uh, has done or still pursuing its you know his or her phd in a particular area so that would be i think beneficial for you to select those you know uh, faculties as your guide because now they are pursuing their phd so they are reading many research paper actually right to find out their problem statement or maybe they have found out their problem statements so they can easily help you to find out your problem statements for your project right so please choose your mentor carefully plus after choosing the guide second point is what 
you have to do regular meetings with your guide you know i can, i guess you have uh, four months to uh, work on the project in final year right so please the problem statement the problem finding statement the first stage is very crucial for this maybe it's better to meet your with your guide regularly daily basis on daily basis just to finalize your problem statement this is very important point so it's not like that someone is strict so you are not going to choose that faculty as your guide and someone is cool so you are going to choose that faculty as your guide i think you should choose a strict faculty as your guide this is my personal experience right because in that case you will be punctual and disciplined you will meet the faculty the, the your guide regularly and it is going to help you a lot in your four months right so please take care of this point now you have to read research paper i think the best technique to finalize your statement problem statement is what go through some research paper some recent research paper in that area means you can say from 2010 to 20 till this 10 years time span not very old research papers right recent research paper try to read try to find try to find out the problems and try to implement those research papers maybe your guide will give you that you read res, uh, this research paper and come with your problem statement or come uh, you know uh, with your idea what you want to do so yeah i know it's very tough to read a research paper initially if you have uh, read first time that definitely you are not going to get anything but that is fine that is normally it happens with everybody when you will read second time third time then you will get something from that research paper fine and try to write down some points also while reading the research paper this is another you know you can say uh, a lengthy uh, topic how to read a research paper definitely i'm going to upload a video in this topic but later fine so now i think according to me the best idea is you have to read some research paper in that area and try to implement those research papers fine maybe 5 or 10 or research papers you read and then find out which research paper you can implement or maybe in some research paper you will get future scope right in last uh, heading would be there future scope so in in, the, in that uh, you know section they have identified that this is the problem in this research paper or in this research and i am going to do this thing in future so you can develop that thing also if you have got that future scope so you can implement that future scope you can take that future scope as your problem statement and make a project this is a very good idea actually but it is tough i know it is tough you have to devote your time fine and as well as now after the project try to publish a research paper that is definitely going to help you if specifically if after your graduation you want to do post graduation right that is definitely going to help you and in placements also in getting placements also if you have published a research paper means you have done something extra right because publishing a research paper is not so easy actually right so i have gone through this experience also maybe some day maybe in some another video i'll share that experience but that is definitely would be a plus point for you publishing a research paper on your project right and now suppose if you want if you don't want to select any this area and you want to work uh, maybe suppose you want to build a website or uh, you can say an app android app so what you can do see try to learn the recent frameworks there in android also everybody knows many frameworks are there so try to learn the recent frameworks and work on those frameworks and use that framework in your project this will show that yes you are a self learner you have done something to learn first of all that framework that is new framework right and after that you have done your project fine rather than just you know taking the common frameworks what everybody is using plus second point is what suppose one student has done and its application his application in java and another stu another student has used kotlin right so definitely kotlin is not in your syllabus and java is yeah it is very popular language but it is common language right and it is your curriculum also now definitely i would prefer i would be more interested in that project the student who have worked in kotlin because i know that kotlin is it's not very easy to learn first of all he or she has learned that language he or she has put 
his efforts her or her efforts in learning that language and that then used that language in your in his or her project right so try to do these kind of things also or another thing what you can do you can you can merge like if you are developing any app so there you can merge cryptography also encryption and decryption some cryptographic algorithm you can merge two areas and develop something new or in android you can uh, merge something you know machine learning model right that is also fine so that is also something new right same for uh, web development also uh, you can work on any recent frameworks like react or angular angular js and these kind of frameworks are very popular nowadays right so you can work these on these kind of frameworks for your front end and for back end i i guess um, uh, nowadays in trending are django and spring as far as i know maybe uh, some other technology is also there which is in trending so you can uh, comment you can do the comment in the comment box so that so that other can also get some ideas about the trending topics right so the main motto is what you have to search for the trending topics right in your area of interest and next thing is what in your project you should you know uh, implement many functionalities it's not like that your your project is just doing two or three things right so that is also very simple project you have to incur- incorporate many functionalities in your project that up uh, first of all this then this it will do this thing then it will do this thing it means at least maybe you can say 10 or 15 functionalities right so that is also a good project because see ultimately your project should show your capabilities your skills your aspirations to the interviewer because he or she is very experienced person and by looking at your project and when you explain that project he or she can analyze you that you have devoted this much of, this much of time to your project and you have gained what you have gained from that project so definitely a good project is what you have devoted your time at least 3 to 4 months in that project and you have gained something from that project something new right you have gained some knowledge from that project it's not any traditional project like management type of projects this is also very important please don't choose the traditional type of projects and if you are choosing then it must have something extraordinary in that project you can just survey the website or the management type of project you are doing about that and you can uh, you know uh, research about that that what extra thing you can do you can add in that website which is very you know eye catcher for the interviewer which will add something which will add something to your project or something to your resume right and next step is what i think your project you know should have visualization and it should be interactive right like i have gone through a video there i have you know he has developed a project path finding algorithm means on a map you will select two points source point and destination destination points and suppose you have put some hurdle in that you have draw a line this is the hurdle right and he has implemented five to six path finding algorithm diastra bellman ford and these kind of algorithms and when you select that algorithm then it will you you know it will show the working of that algorithm like el diastra algorithm you select it will show the working properly on the map that how he is going to find the path and finally when he has find find out the path that algorithm then a line would be drawn like this that this is the shortest path from this to this right so this is also a you know good factor if you can add some visualization to your project and it should be interactive also so in brief if you ask me some tips for project selection for final year students or pre final year students just go for the trending topics right plus use recent technologies recent frameworks new languages in your project right and please choose your mentor carefully these are very important points your project should show that you have worked hard on your project you have devoted time on your project and you have gained something new from that project 
you have enhanced your knowledge and skills after working on that project right don't go for the traditional and simple project please in final year and try to publish a research paper at least one research paper in in international journal or any conference on your project right so that's it for this video now i'm going to see you in the next video till then bye bye take care